Welcome, friends, family, confidants, ladies, gentlemen, children of all ages. We are back. West Side Story is here for, I believe, finally, episode 10. Woo-hoo. We've reached the double digits, which to me, when I was growing up, that was a big feat. So, congrats. Here we are. FaceTiming, video chatting. We've moved up in the world. We, we were doing conference calling before. Now we're on the video chat, so we're legit. Um, I'm here with my, my beautiful wife. Hello. Just trying to stay awake after a hard workout this morning. Yes. Ready for that five o'clock. <laughs> yes, yes. And then, uh, as always, this would not be a West Side story without our West Side man, Mr. Dan Brown. How are you doing, my friend? Hola. Doing well. Sorry. Had to throw in the hola there because I didn't want Anya to be thrown off the whole podcast. <laughs> Good job. I'm going to say... Sorry. I, you can take the boy out of California. You can't take the California out of the boy. <laughs> no need to. I love the fact that you're outside right now and the birds are chirping because that makes things a little bit easier at this point. So, Yeah, yeah. It's uh, where I take all my conference calls. I love it. I love it. Nice office, that's for sure. Eighty degrees on the east or on the west side today. How's the weather looking on the on or I'm sorry, eighty on the east side. What's it looking uh-huh. like on the west side? Ah, uh, a lot cooler than that. It's like uh, mid sixties, but nice. Um, yeah, it's uh it's a uh, it's treating a person right over here. Although just before we recorded, it was super windy, and my backyard is kind of like a funnel space where it comes in. <laughs> And spins around and knocks stuff over before it leaves. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, uh, maybe I will take this in my other office, which is my bedroom, which I share with my, which I share with my wife. Not only the bedroom, but the office. So it's uh, it's been interesting trying to take conference calls. Well, hey, we're we're all finding new ways of doing stuff, but it seems to be working out and. I'm excited because really, I mean, here we are like week six or whatever of not a whole lot going on. But at the flip side of that, there actually is a whole lot going on um, behind the scenes. Um, You know, we've got the NHL talking their plans and all that stuff. But what we are, in fact, today as we're recording, we're getting ready to finish up the NWHL uh, draft, draft, which just started last night, which I have to say on Cascadia. Anya shared that uh, Boston ended up trading for the number one pick from Toronto, and I, I said that's fucking bullshit, man. <laughs> these guys, these guys were the hands-on. Fa- I'm sorry, these gals were the hands-on favorite to win the Isabel Cup. They they tore up the league and they walk away with the number one draft pick. What the hell? That's just good general management. Hell that's yeah. what that is. <laughs> well, what does that but say you- about Toronto then? Because they were the one they <laughs> traded for <laughs> the new league. I don't know. I don't know. I thought uh, they were going to have Steve Dangle on there announcing Toronto's draft pick, but then they announced for Buffalo. I don't know what's going on with Toronto <laughs> just yet, but those two things leave me shaking my head a little. Like, how do you give the number one pick to Boston? I know. Uh. And do you know how it works? Like, how do they decide who gets it in the order that it was? I don't know the. I don't know how it is, and I don't think that there's a ton of stuff out there on who gets what okay. and how they get it, um, but let me let me go and look for that so that the next time we uh, yeah it was we record we can find out because I was thinking the same thing myself I was like what is Toronto getting out of that for sure I, well, well future I do, draft pick so Toronto I that. Toronto did end up picking up an extra draft pick because of the trade um they traded away their first round pick this year and a later round pick but next year they picked up Boston's first round pick. Oops. And their second round pick, I believe, next year. So, um, so yeah. So that would be set into what place they get to pick for next year. I'm assuming the order has to do with how you finish. So yeah, Boston because, should have picked last. Well, yeah, and that's how it was set up is Boston was actually the last on every round. So, but yeah. except mm-hmm. for the first one. It's just weird. I was like, no, they don't deserve that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. They did. They worked their butts off and apparently... I whenever they decide that they're going to do the Isabel Cup, hopefully they don't cancel it. But I definitely think they'll win it. Is that so? It hasn't officially been canceled yet. No, not that I've seen. Just postponed. Yeah, at this point, it's still a postponement. Okay. So they haven't uh, like the WHL and other places have completely canceled their season. As far as I know, the NWHL is still hoping to you know bring the Isabel Cup since they were just about to. They just have the game. The yeah. game for the cup. Yeah. That's yep. it. Since they, <laughs> since they just have a four-hour time slot, they can probably fit that in. It's not like the NHL where they're waiting to figure out, okay, how do we do this? Yeah. 
Isabella Cup is just like, hey, we get to go ahead and let's pull the trigger and play it. Yeah, I would have to imagine, I would have to believe that like if, if the CHL was at a point in the season where they were getting ready to to start the Memorial Cup, like if all the other playoffs had been done, all the other league championships had been given, they might have tried to hold off and, and still have the Memorial Cup. Um, but Wait, okay, yeah. Just I'm, just that tournament. Yeah, um, yeah. But, but because of where it was, I mean, that, I, guess, I guess the women's hockey is kind of in a in a good position two teams in one game that's all you have left to finish it off yeah and it yeah was, yeah i thought it was pretty cool i was actually reading a little bit on um that well we kind of slipped that in there the expansion team toronto yeah we named, did congrats toronto yeah that's pretty exciting i mean since, since the closure of the cwhl that um you know they're able to expand back into canada and yeah. toronto is a huge market and from all the reading i've done has just been really awesome um i'm following for women's hockey and all that stuff and it's cool but it also changes the season that's coming up. So I, last year they did 24 games, um, all five of the teams. Yeah. This year they're actually dropping down to only 20 games per team in the season. So that was an interesting um, take. They don't know how the playoffs are going to work at this point. That's the latest I've read. Hmm. So it would be interesting, though, to see how it all unfolds coming forward. Every year is a new year within WHL as far as figuring out how playoffs are going to work, and you know, which doesn't make is, sense to me. I don't get it. Why? Why? Why is it so up in the air? Do you know? <laughs> I I can't speak to that, but I just <laughs> I feel like because of the addition and subtraction yeah. of teams and kind of the the um, I think that's one of the things that the PWHPA is kind of speaking against is how the business is managed. Yes. Yeah, um, like. The NWHL is filled with a lot of good hockey people, but not a lot of good business people has kind of been their take on it. And I think that this is kind of one of those examples where yeah. you can see a little bit of their point, not to disparage either crew. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I think that, OK, so you're going to change that up. What's the plan? Yeah, and like, they don't have one. It's like that. That I think that irks me. I'm like, you're trying to establish yourself as a, a reputable professional hockey league. And I'm talking about the NWHL right now, which I am all in support of. I've enjoyed everything I've learned and been part of and read and watched and everything for the last season. But it's like you chose to expand this team. You should have a plan, have a business plan. So it makes sense when Gary Bettman comes out and saying, we don't agree with the business model. Yeah. And until there is no women's league, we're not going to step in. Which makes yeah. sense. And it was interesting because of this whole expansion, um, Kyla, who I have been honored to tweet with for a Kyla little bit. Kyla who? Is that a Kyla Jane? Kyla Lane. Kyla Lane. Yes. Kyla J. Lane. So J. Lane. Go. That's why yeah. I was singing Kyla J. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> from, women, from Women's Hockey Life. Sorry, Kyla. But her, not, yeah, sorry. Um, I actually sorry. got it right, so shame on the host <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's always my fault man <laughs> but anyways this is a tweet that came out the day that it got announced there's an expansion and i just i actually loved it it says more exposure for women's hockey is great when a league exists that supports its athletes as professionals other active women's hockey leagues w leagues won't cease to exist nor should they there's potential for growth while others like the pwhpa fight for more and then she goes on to say, men do not only have the NHL to aspire to, countless other leagues exist for them to continue playing the game they love, but the best of the best have a league to play in where they are treated as such. And this is possible for women's too. I love that because if yeah. wh whoever's listening, you know, knows where I'm like, ah, the PWHPA, you kind of are annoying me. I'm not a fan. I'm not going to support you. But man, I did not know one that Kyla was an advocate for the PWHPA. Mm -hmm. But she went and she sent me a message and just said, thank you so much for, you know, because she said she thought she was going to get tons of trolls, you know, just like, ah, because honestly, unfortunately, we're being forced to choose sides, which suck yeah. because I love she, what she said. She generally does get a lot of trolls for a lot of the stuff that she posts. I'm sure she does. But I, I went and I commented and I just said, God, thank you so much because this opens my eyes to think there is more room I may not agree with the way that the PWHPA may be going about it. They want a new, they want something better. Well, what's your plan to get there? There's no plan. I don't see it. They're not sharing it. So, like, how am I supposed to support that? But <laughs> stuff like the NWHL has this 
new expansion, but there's no plan. What's going to happen? How is the you know how is the playoffs right. going to work? It's like both sides have their issues. It's I two love, sides of the same coin. Absolutely, and I exactly. love what she said. It opened my eyes. I don't. I don't know where I, I can't say that I align myself with one or the other. I just want to see women's hockey grow. And I think this is exciting. It's an exciting time. And Kyla really opened my eyes to that. So shout out to you. Totally. Hey, did you put a soapbox under your feet today? Me? No, I'm, I'm, oh, wait, why? <laughs> I am such, oh. <laughs> I'm gotcha. such a, I'm Did such an sh- idiot, man. I tell you, I'm so. Everybody jokes me a lot that I am just. I really am naive. So legitimately, <laughs> when you said soapbox, I'm like, no, my leg is up. I just put it on my knee. <laughs> I'm such a dork. Zing. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, one thing I want to say about uh, about Kyla as well is congratulations. Um, as she put it uh, on her Instagram feed, yes. is that, that she made the best glove save of her career. Yep. So <laughs> and, cute. Uh, <laughs> And uh, got engaged with her longtime uh, boyfriend. Which, funny, and, I heard that she they first met on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Nice. So, uh, so, yeah, big congrats to those two. Um, planning the wedding in this time of uncertainty. For yeah. real. Uh, is a little bit, little, I'm sure we'll be able to speak with that when we get her on. But, uh, but yeah, she's uh, been one of those voices because I think that there's definitely the two sides and we hear a lot with like the Hillary Knights and yeah some of the some of those folks where they're all one or all the other and yes. although she she's an advocate for the PWHPA we've had conversations she's posted a bunch of stuff out there like she's not against the NWHL she does uh, as, and she can speak to this but um there's just room for more like yes. to have people playing now to have maybe that build into something in the future is great but um it would be better if we could get more transparency instead of just tweets from the athletes that are part of the pwhpa or the official Um, statement they came out with (laughs) yeah the first sentence this is not us or them i'm like come on you just made it us or them by saying that (laughs) (laughs) yeah Yeah. but there's i mean there's folks like the Lindsay fries the world and things like that that are out there like pushing it forward and, and pushing the needle, as they say, um, in ways that they can right now. And Kyla is another one of those people that's just great to see. Where it's like, hey, I'm doing my thing, you do your thing, yeah. and hopefully it'll be a better place for women in the future. Um, and if you want to aspire to be a beer league goalie like Kyla is, you can do that too. <laughs> <laughs> I love. Uh... Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> uh... <laughs> She's she uh she's good friends with uh, Shannon Zabados. Oh, All right, okay. her dog is even named after Shannon. So that's awesome. Uh, the other day, the NHL Network or the Olympic Channel, one of the two, had thrown on the uh, the gold medal game in P- of Pyeongchang, and I got to say, it was still captivating. A few years down or two years down the road, I was watching it. I'm like, I know what's going to happen. I know the second goal is going to get scored by the U.S. In the third period, I know that there's that hit that, should, that some people feel should have been five, including the U.S. coach, where he's like, that's five. Yep. <laughs> uh, but hard-fought game. I knew everything that was going to happen, and then just the heartbreaking moment for Zabados getting scored on in, in uh, the shootout. But I was just like, wow, wow. Sit down and tell me, watch this game. I defy anybody to sit down and watch that game. And tell me, A, that women's hockey isn't as physical as men's. Yeah. Sure, they don't have open ice checks. And not that that should even be a qualification. And B, that's not as exciting. I'll call horse shit on that every <laughs> single time. Yep. And it's not it's not just that game. But watching that game while I was working the other day, I was just like, oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> on both sides. Yeah, there's something about women playing hockey that I've fallen in love with. And I think it's the finesse. It's It's the... It's just the grace of it and watching them skate and then it's a different type of game. It's still hockey, but it's just it's, different from watching women's hockey like, to men's hockey. Yeah, the quickness and the cycling, yeah. there, there's a lot more cycling in the women's game. Like where you're somebody skating behind you and picking up the puck and another person's head, you know, head personing, I guess, instead of head manning out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Think, th- things like that, that uh, it's just like a different strategy. But you know, there were some vicious body blocks in that show. Oh, you can't yeah. call can't call them checks, but uh, 
but you know, kind of is. <laughs> it's uh, unofficially. Yeah. yeah. And who was it? Uh, 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 the two, the two women that eventually got married. There was. Oh a, yeah, uh, the two captains. Yeah, the two captains that eventually got married. And there's just a vicious cross track <laughs> that I watched again, and I'm like. I remember when they got married, they had the side by side of that and them standing at the altar. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like stick and fist up in the face. And like, you know, I guess it takes a hockey player to understand a hockey player. For sure. And that 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 point there actually plays into like the camaraderie with hockey players, though. I mean, you know, we talk we've got Parker coin on Cascadia a lot. And he's he's one of those that had a great career in the WHL. And he talks so much about how when you're on the ice, you know what your job is. And then when you're off the ice, these are human beings. These are people you grew up with. These are people that are your friends. And it's the same. I mean, it's the same in women's hockey. Hockey's hockey. So, um, yeah, that's in fact, I mean, two of them ended up getting married. So that really shows that the relationships there um, can can really be built even in a a, a violent uh, situation. Oh, yeah. Because they both know what's at stake when they're on the ice and they know what life is about when they're off the ice. So totally. Rugby is um, the only other sport that I can think of that has that kind of camaraderie. Yep. Or or maybe a, a one-to-one combat sport like uh, <laughs> res- wrestling or something like that where you respect a person and you can have a relationship with them after that. Yeah. You know, whether that's a friendship or, or, uh, or um, a platonic relationship, yeah. but you can still – Respect. You got a job to do. I got a job to do. Did I bloody your nose? Okay, I'm sorry. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's abs- good stuff. It's great. It's great storytelling, too. The one thing I wanted to chime in real quick that of what Kyla said that really opened my eyes up was when she said about there's plenty of opportunity for men in hockey. There's different leagues. I mean, think about the NHL is your, is your pinnacle. That's where you, most people want to end up there, but very few people do. But if they don't, they could land AHL. They could land ECHL. They could go play in Europe. They could land KHL. I mean, there are so many opportunities. So I, I finally hit me like, okay, the more opportunities, the better. There doesn't need to just be one league at this point. You know, um, exactly. And that I think is really, really exciting for the future of the sport. Um, it's just because it, it was kind of like when the NWHL and the CWHL were, were kind of, you know, uh, operating at the same time. That was really, really cool. And then, of course, the CWHL has to shut down for financial reasons. And that that's a whole nother story. But the more opportunity, the better. So I told yeah. I told Anya today, I said, I think what really needs to happen is both the PWHPA and the NWHL, and this is just my humble opinion, but both leagues really, really need to up their marketing games. Yes, and they absolutely. really need to, because the, the the product is great. The talent, these ladies are phenomenal athletes and they play hockey at a level that's that rivals men and, and all that stuff. But somebody, I, I would... I would love to see a good marketing sponsor come in there and for both of them and just help them get their message out even more. Um, right. The more exposure they can get. And that's what the PWHPA has been doing. I get that. That's the Dream Gap Tour and all that stuff. Um, but even more, even more than that. You know, the the NHL has 100 years behind them now. Um, yeah. But you know what? It is the 21st century. It's like, come on. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, seriously. The, yeah. Yeah, there's that guy that follows us, The Clown Speaks on Twitter. Um, and, uh, he's got a lot of good stuff to say. And that was one of his points is like, show me a business plan that puts some marketing behind it because yep. in, in order to put butts in seats, you got to have the dollars behind that marketing effort. And yep. there needs to be a unification or a substantial sponsor that puts substantial money behind it. And, you know, that's a little bit harder to discuss now than it was yeah. three months ago, but I mean, that's what's got to happen for the women's game. Well, now that, I think that would be the best time because everybody's online. Yeah, you know, everybody's that's everybody's getting accustomed to being online. Even the older people, you know, are online using electronics and all that stuff. So now I think would be great because you can push the live streaming stuff, just like with Twitch or um, I don't know ESPN. They do living stream stuff too. Yeah, and just all that. It's I think now is a great time to start. 
When you say older people, what is your age range? <laughs> I am not 40 yet, so older than me. <laughs> so I'm an older person who's online doing that electronic-y stuff, too. You're the exception. Dan, uh, we're, bo- Dan we're both in our 40s right now, man. So um, I'm Not for much longer, man. I, I know. <laughs> I know. I know. So that's okay. I mean, my dad is, is 65 years old, and he teaches all of his college classes online right now, and he does well with it. So Yeah, um, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, and he loves it. He loves technology. He's, he's, he was an early adopter. So um, I thought I was switching gears a little bit just about what we were saying about women's hockey and that it's the 21st century. Um, I read an article from uh, my glasses are being weird. Just women's sports about it was an interview with Hillary Knight <clears throat> and then her um, she's kind of the face of the PWHPA. And it's right. interesting to say that she said she went to the University of Wisconsin, I believe, and that there was always people there. I mean, they had games at the women's hockey games 15,000 people would show up to a women's hockey game. So the audience is there. The fan base is there. It's now you got to get that marketing out there to let people know when they're playing. And if you can't get that marketing validated and pushed out into the masses, you're right. Nobody's going to come and put your butt in a seat. You're only going to be able to fill up 100 or 200 arenas. So I think if you can get a great get a great backing, get a great marketing mind and be willing to adapt to the changes that are happening in the 21st century. For sure. There needs to be more, uh, for lack of a better term, mainstream exposure too. Yes. Like you think about, you know, there's freaking mini golf being put on, being put online, <laughs> competitive mini golf <laughs> by NBC, yet they can't Yet they can't broadcast women's women's hockey, women's soccer. Now they have to know. come to an agreement, right? There isn't, isn't that licensing <clears throat> stuff. They have to come to the agreement with the NWHL or whoever to be able to broadcast their. Yeah, there's there's all that, but tell me that one of those uh, one of those channels or one of those um, literal channels or one of those virtual channels, if they approach the NWHL um, and were willing to put money behind it, tell me that they wouldn't look for that exposure because that's the same type of thing that's going to put the money behind it that's going to put butts in seats that's going to drive interest twitch and stuff like that is great but that's not your that's not going to pull in your casual fan that just decides to sit down one day turn on the tv and so the exposure on the nhl network or nbc sports network or that stuff would drive huge gains in that space if anybody was willing to do it what about this, um, though? PEWHPA, their last two Dream Gap tour stops, one was in Philly, woo, go Flyers, um, announced um, right before they did their games, or I don't know if they were able to do it because of this corona shit. Uh, but anyways, they announced the um, ESPN and Monumental Sports Network as a new streaming partner. I don't know if it's in depth, like for the future or if it was just the last two games, but I'm like, it's still, it's not, still not being broadcast. It's only streaming. So it's like online yeah, yeah. streaming. So there's there's that. I don't know why we can't move on to television. Like, what is blocking it? Some, I don't get it. Somebody's going to have to take a chance on it. It's a lot like back in the day when ESP, back in the early 2000s, when hockey was going through trying to find, when, I'm sorry, men's hockey was trying to find themselves again. And it became a very boring game and not a lot of people were watching it on TV. Um, and, and ESPN said, we're going to pull the plug. We're done. And NBC hopped in there very quickly um, well, it was pre NBC. It was Versus, which became NBC Sportsnet. But mm-hmm. they hopped in early and said, "All right, we'll do this. You know, we can't cover all eighty-two games for you, but we'll give you Sundays um, after football season, obviously." <laughs> um, but but we'll start to up that. We're going to buy Versus. Uh, we're going to turn it into NBC Sportsnet. And look at what the last fifteen years of NBC's exposure of hockey has done for the game. That's very much a part of of Gary Bettman uh, and what he, the business that he's put the model he's put together there, but it, it's going to take a network to want to take a chance on the, on women's hockey, the same way that NBC took the chance on, on men's hockey. Yeah, exactly. So do you think there's a difference between this like type of streaming, which obviously they had um, the NWHO, they streamed with Twitch all season. They had like, 83% increase in viewership. Wow, that's awesome. It's awesome, but it's not enough. I mean, I think it was, I can't, I don't even want to throw out a number because I cannot remember it to save my life, but it's like, that's not enough. Like, they need to, I think, the question I have is, do you you see a big difference between being on TV 
and like just broadcast. Yes, TV. broadcast. Absolutely. And Absolutely. They, I think if somebody would take that chance and get them on a broadcast, even if it's once a month to start or something to get these games out into the public and more. But we got to get a marketing person. Women's at, hockey needs to have a marketing person. Yeah. Look at the look at the WNBA. Yes. They were they were, you know, if you look at that as a model to follow, they started out being broadcast locally yeah. and then went went to like a game of the week situation and they have more exposure, they're able to build their fan bases. They're able to build their fan bases outside of their locale as well. Like, you know, you may have somebody that's into a particular player um that's able to follow them buy their jersey whether that's, you know, Sue Bird I got to give Sue Bird props because, mm-hmm. you know, she is Sue freaking Bird after all. Yeah. <laughs> and was my son's first sports hero. That's oh, awesome. that's awesome. That, that, that was his first sports hero. It's like it's like uh, she was the Gary Payton of the of the storm or is, I guess. Yeah. Um, so hopefully she'll get a chance to play again. Yay. But like you, you look at that and like somebody was willing to take a chance on him yeah. and they were able to start building and start building. Granted, they also have the NBA money behind them. So yeah, it's an apples to oranges comparison, but still there's got to be more interest and, and but see, that's where I think the word, that's the wrong word. I think there is interest. It's just not being told. So like what Hillary Knight in this article, I read saying that there's interest, there's a fan base, there's people who will come to the games who will watch it, but not enough people know about it. So you've when got I, to let them know. Yeah, when I say interest, I mean interest by networks, interest yeah, by yeah, okay. executives, which are generally male, that sit in all of these spots. Yes. That that will be the, you know, poo-poo the women's game. Oh, it's just women playing a sport. Um, to jump back to the draft that we were talking about, there was something that we talked about before we got online today, was the, um, the fact that these women, like, in – in amongst all of the stuff that we're talking about, these women in the draft are forced to play in either their locale where they live now yeah, yeah. Or, or where they can find an actual day job. Like you think of Kim Sass yep. who has a day job yeah. um, and, and can play within a space or where they're going to grad school, like all of those play into the draft. So it's not as simple, Hey, we're drafting you and we're going to pay you and you're going to come play for us. Yeah. All of, all of these women have like, hey, am I going to be working coaching hockey? Am I going to be working as an architect? Am I going to be working at Starbucks? Or whatever that happens to be, that has to factor into their decision. It does factor into their decision. I can't imagine how difficult that would be to right? have, you it's, know, you travel for games. And now with them like having a sixth place that they're going to have to go travel to. And if I understand right, it's like there's going to be like two games there. And two games, you know, they both have to travel to at least to each of them twice. So it's just right. that's travel. I mean, and then ugh, I just that's difficult. Yeah, and to and it's the only place to go to. To Aaron's point earlier, you know, you have you don't have thirteen different leagues on west of the Mississippi yeah. and just as many east of the Mississippi to fall into if you don't make that one slot. You have NWHL right now, PWHPA, if you were uh, lucky enough to be a part of that, and then Beer League. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like, really, really, those are your three choices, and that's completely unfair. Babe, you mentioned, uh, though, that Toronto, in this draft, there was a a few PWHPA players that they chose, and those players signed contracts? Is that what you told me? Yeah. um, When they announced the expansion of the Toronto team, Immediately, th- they signed five people, and they were all PW- PWHPA players, or part of that, <coughs> um, I don't know. So how does that What work? you want to call it. <laughs> how does they that They were part work? of that movement for the PWHPA. So an NWHL team picks up a few PWHPA players, and, and you're, they did sign their contracts. Yeah. Okay. Five of them signed to be on the new Toronto team coming the fall. So how does that work? Um, I'm assuming they're no what does that do? What does that do? PWHPA. F- but what does that do for the message? I'm not this is, and I'm not asking this as like a some sort of trying to stir controversy here. She no. she told me that though, and I was quite surprised. I was like, I don't, I don't understand. To I, me, it dilutes your message. Yes. Yeah. Like regardless of <coughs> of what you're in, if you're if you're and and I don't disparage or discredit any of those folks that signed. 
because if I were lucky enough and worked hard enough to be where they're at and have to make that choice, I can't say what choice I would make. But yeah. from a from a bystander's point, it's uh, it dilutes the message. It's yeah. like, okay, well, we're part of this. And we want to make it better. But I mean, ultimately, that's the goal of making it better for future generations. So they've got to make decisions for the now is kind of the way that I I. Yeah, roll I don't the, roll, the, roll that around in my head. Yeah. And it, when I read that, I was like, I, exactly the same thing. It's like that kind of just hurts. I think the PWHPA mission and it, it hmm. maybe it doesn't. But in my, I get that like, well, they were fighting against the NWHL and now they're signing to be on a team that just expanded. It just seems I'm not going to judge anybody because honestly, I'm excited that there is a six team. You know, and this is right. cool. It's going to open up more opportunities. It's another team, another, even though we kind of lost games. <laughs> Last yeah. year we had 24. This year, apparently we're only having 20. But 20 per team. Yes, that's so, true. Okay, right. so there is more games. But so, but the, there's still a disparity between the Hillary Knights and those folks that have endorsement gigs outside of, yeah. of, uh, of the game that can do this for the rest of the people that are just trying to earn a wage somewhere else and continue playing the game like that's where on one hand it dilutes the message on the other hand it's like you got to do what you got to do yeah that's true it's your dream to go play yeah you have a short window that you can play a sport professionally um you got to take that window sometimes when you can so but but yeah from bystander if you're just looking at it in a vacuum i would be like huh so (laughs) what does this actually mean yeah once again, if there was if there if the marketing thing, I think that that could help quite a bit to get the message out there. It's a great story from both sides, and it needs to be told. So, um, another point, something we talked about uh, on our pre-show Slack earlier. You brought up Anya Packer, which is Anya's favorite player because yeah. her name is Anya. She's not a player. I'm anymore. sorry, that's right. She was. She's, she's the head of the um, NWHL director. Director. Okay. In yeah, NW. She's the head. Also, the uh, NWHLPA. So, yes. All these acronyms are so confusing. Yeah, they're 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 alphabet soup. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you said you had brought up that you know that she had an interesting take on some of the different difficult conversations and how we move forward with all that. What was what was that? Yeah, yeah. Um, did you want me to jump in here, Anya? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Um, she had a couple of things like uh, I'll just read them here and I've gone dark if you can't see me. That's all um, good. It's uh, nothing is perfect. Every league needs work. Every contract needs work. Every revenue stream needs attention. Everywhere out throughout the sports, uh, throughout sports, both male and female, there's no limit to what we can achieve when we appropriately respond to healthy criticism. Now, they were criticizing the NWHL yeah. and she also said, I don't think somebody addressing somebody's downfalls is a problem. It made us change a lot. Now we're having conversations about getting full-time insurance. Now we're having conversations on quality of rinks, the right practice times, increasing the number of practices we have. All of those things are brought by a healthy conversation, a professional pushback. And I think that's really important, which, you know, given the kind of animosity that we've talked about yeah. is, is, is uh, it kind of harkens back a little bit to to Kyla's take on it. Like, okay, we need to be having honest conversations about what's going on um, in order to to move forward. And if you criticize us, that's great. Keep it coming because it'll just keep this conversation going and driving us toward achieving something more than we have. So I really like that. And that's such a good take on it too. And I think I struggle with my thought is like, they want to be able to pay these women what Absolutely. they're worth. But how do you do that if you literally do not have the money to pay you a $50,000 a year contract, which is nothing, obviously, compared to what the NHL players get. But if you literally don't have the money, I, yeah. I just I don't know where that fine line is. And now, But I think it's great. I mean, they're, they're trying. They're trying. Let me say something that Anya brought up earlier. I think last week we were talking. I did not realize anytime you buy an NWHL jersey with somebody's name on it, they get a cut of that jersey sale. Yep. So I know it's not a lot, but I told her, I said, well, 
once uh, once that extra cash we're supposed to be getting from the government comes in, so let's order a couple jerseys. Let's 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 support that, you know. And and anybody listening, if you didn't realize that, if you pick up a NWHL jersey, whatever player you pick, they get proceeds from that jersey sale. I mean, it, it, if they marketed that. I, I, I would have probably I have known. no idea how I found that out. I have no idea. I think it was an yeah. email I get because I get all their emails yeah. and stuff like that. And, like, you know, the the store is still open. And then in fine print was whatever if one you, you buy, the player jersey, gets a yeah. 50%. Yeah. A couple of years ago, they did a big push on that, like the jerseys and the jerseys. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, um, the, with people's names on them, when Michelle, when, uh, Michelle Picard was in town, we chatted with her. I mean, it's not a huge amount. It's like being an extra in a film and you get a little kickback every time the film yeah. is played in right. the public space. But either way, you're showing interest. And you're showing it's, support. Yes, interest and support that NWHL can use that data to drive their agenda forward. Yep. Um, and uh, and not to mention you're putting a little coin in the pocket of the people that really deserve it. For sure. Let's uh, also, too, a uh, positive note, something we talked about, or you mentioned earlier, was that the, the Arizona Coyotes are really stacking their coaching staff with females. So, so cool. Heck, yeah. A couple of years ago, we had uh, just popped up on my feed, oddly enough, today. Um, Lindsay Fry came into town, um, and she does fry hockey as well as um, uh, the Little Kachinas. Okay. Um, or, little, or Little Coyotes. I forget which name it has right now. But she was appointed a position um, that escapes me right now within uh, the organization for the Arizona Coyotes. And now they're coaching all the way up. Um, has women at just about every level coaching both women and men, things like that. And it was just another good example of an organization doing right by hiring the right people for the right job, regardless yeah. of the sexism that's existed previously. Um, so yeah, get out there and take a look at it. If you look at their little Kachinas and little coyotes program, um, they've done a lot, uh, about hiring, hiring women. In fact, uh, one of the last PWHPA dream gap tour stops, I think it was the last one cause they had to cancel Tokyo, um, yeah. was in Arizona where Shane Doan and, and some of the, some of the folks, the alumni from the Coyotes, played against the the uh, PWHPA players. Oh, that's awesome! And Lindsay suited up right alongside him, so pretty <laughs> awesome to see see her suiting up against people she played against and with for a number of years, uh, uh, with uh, with some of the alumni from the Coyotes because there's a deserved spot for her and kind of an interesting take on it for me. I was like, yeah, you go girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Anybody listening, check her out. Now you had mentioned too women's hockey life with their home workouts and stuff. And, and you put Lindsay Fry in that same sentence. Is she part of that? She is not. Okay. So I was talking about just the different people, like the hockey wraparound and hockey sauce kit that are putting out fun videos yeah. that, that you can do if you play to try or your kids play and you're looking for something interesting, go out there and grab some inspiration. Um, but also women's hockey life, uh, and, uh, Lindsay Fry herself have been putting out these, uh, workouts and stick handling drills and things like that to keep people active while we're all getting stir crazy. Yeah. yeah. And that's so fun. I'd be I'd be curious to see how much uh, of that type of stuff is driving uh, inline skate skate sales as well. For real, <laughs> a lot of people like a lot of people like I got to get my ice fixed. I can't get my ice fixed. Mars blades. Let's do it. Yeah, I've seen a lot. Like the NHL has been showing a lot of pictures of their stud players out there just skating in their driveway on their inlines right now. So yeah, totally, um, and not just. P. P. K. Subban in his hallway with his wife. <laughs> right. Did you see that? Oh my god, I absolutely yeah. loved it. What I were did. they doing? PK and Lindsey Vaughn. Well, PK was stick handling in the hallway. Yeah. And so like that, all of a sudden, Lindsey Vaughn comes in with the vacuum cleaner and like knocks him down <laughs> to get the, the, was it a tennis ball? Was that what it was? Or something? I think it was. It was, but, a, it was a, a Dyson and she just laid him out. Yep. Points for the girl. <laughs> That's his, awesome. His, his caption was things getting competitive in here, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love Somehow, them. Yeah, somehow I think their relationship would be like Sue Bird and Megan Rapino, where there's just like no matter what it is, it could be skipping rocks or spitting watermelon seeds. There's going to be a throwdown if that goes on. Yep, yeah, that's definitely what that feels like for sure. 
Oh man, there's a lot going on. We uh, I wanted to I wanted to mention or, or talk to you real quick. We're running out of time here, but the WHL draft happened last week, and um, we talked a little bit. Well, actually, we talked quite a bit about it on we Cascadia. We talked about five, four teams. Yeah, well, this is what I'm going to mention. <laughs> we talked about every U.S. division team and their first round pick, which the Tri City Americans got a stud defenseman. I'm pretty excited about that. The Seattle Thunderbirds got a guy that can light the lamp like crazy. 133 points and 31 games games last year that's pretty fucking amazing um and then portland didn't have a first round pick which we mentioned that's nothing new portland hardly ever has first round picks <laughs> mm-hmm. not because they lost it this time because they traded it away spokane got a good defenseman spokane's losing a lot of defensemen and i said oh wait after we were done i said we didn't cover everett actually this was like hours and okay, hours but, after we but, were done recording but that's did o- you that's okay everett did not have a pick until round four Oh, why? They traded all their picks away for players. Oh. Yeah, they did. They I did, did not they, realize that. They were trading Mr. Ma- perhaps the rights to Mr. Right away from Mr. Right now this year. Yep, yep. So they were just building to win for sure this year and then possibly be in the same spot Seattle's been in. Yeah. Uh, for yeah. the last couple of years where, you know, you have the Barzals and the folks at the Theodores the folks like that that come through the system and then it's like, well, we got to start rebuilding somehow. (laughs) So So as a West Coaster, I got to ask, how do you feel about Roddy Ross being gone? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'd say, um, I'd say mixed feelings. Just kind of, it's, it's, it's hard to keep things in perspective at this point when it comes to sports. It's kind of like, okay. You know, granted, we've just spent an hour talking passionately about the NWSL. <laughs> yeah, but but you know, the uh, when you're talking about uh, when you're talking about hockey at that level, you're talking about people being there and then moving on. Yes. Yeah. So just kind of wishing them the best in their career, and like the Theodores, the Marlows, oh, the yeah. Bar- Barzals, I want to see them succeed wherever they go. But you know, kind of, kind of. Kind of cuts a little deep there, I got to yeah. say. Yeah. Well, let's just, uh, let me remind you, Mr. Islanders fan, that Roddy Ross is a Philadelphia Flyers draft pick, so. Um, yeah, I know, so <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I thought it was, was an interesting... What's that? I was going to hopefully gloss over that. But. <laughs> it was an yeah. interesting move. I didn't, but I mean, when you've got Lida on there as well, yeah. who's who's the future for now, I mean, he's going to get picked mm-hmm. up by somebody in the draft. And, and I didn't realize, Ross, this was his 20-year-old season coming up because he started so late in the dub. Um, yeah. He was a rookie at like 18 or 19, so... Um, but you know, good for him. That was probably the biggest trade of the day. A lot. It's going to be interesting. I love this time of year, but I love what a lot of these people said after the draft was over. They said, okay, kids. Okay, boys, relax, breathe, take some time. You've got several weeks now, continue training the way you've been training in quarantine, keep doing what you're doing, but you don't have to worry so much anymore. Just live right now. Um, and I thought that was a really good message for them because everything's still up in the air. Um, for sure. I'm hearing, I've got some inside information that I'm hearing August before there could be any real decisions made on the return of, of the WHL. So, yeah, I heard the same. I know the USHPL that like uh, Fresno Monsters and the mm-hmm. San Diego Goals and stuff like that has already said we're coming back in late September. But that was the first league I've heard of that actually had the hoots, but a throw that out on the table. But definitely the dub is like, no, nah, we're going to take a little more cautious approach. Yep. Yep. Well, and the dub two's got all, you know, there's all the border stuff. And I mean, everybody's got to deal with the border stuff and that, that will come to a close. I mean, the, the, the at the bottom line, there's starting to be some light at the end of the tunnel. Um, some things are, are starting to move. I'm actually really excited for the possibility of the NHL uh, setting up in like four different arenas and playing like three to four games a day. Um, I think that would be pretty cool. Uh, just watch some tournament style hockey um, and then doing what they're doing. Um so yeah, I mean it's 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 coming around. It's gonna get there. It's gonna get back. Uh, one day we'll tell our grandkids. Some of us sooner rather than others because we'll be grandpas sooner. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but you know we'll we'll tell our kids about all this and how we all made it through and you know we were better for it. So um, yeah. I don't know. I feel like maybe we should end there. Yeah, that's good. I want a positive message. There's too much negativity now. So. Um, 
bottom line, women's hockey support it. Uh, by the time this posts, the draft will already be over. Um, but if you're interested in, in women's hockey in the NWHL, do a little research. Find out what players got picked up. Um, you know, as Anya said, do things like join their email list. You know, stay in the know. We can use our voice here as, as much of a grassroots as possible for you. Um, but you got to do a little work on your own, too. So um, reach out to us. Yeah, for sure. Talk to us. Subscribe, um, like, and share. Yep. Facebook uh, Facebook group uh, is still is still growing. Um, you know, it, it, everything is everything is weird right now, but yet everything is still very familiar right now. So, um, yeah, I did want to say, Michael Pellegrini. One of the coolest things about quarantine, it seems like every three or four days that guy's putting out a new track. Yeah. Yeah, ain't that cool? That is like, cool. People getting creative now that they have the time Absolutely. when they're not parenting or working on their own <laughs> stick handling. Absolutely. So shout out to Michael. If you don't know who that is, you obviously haven't been paying attention. Michael has been so gracious enough to give us uh, uh, permission to use his music uh, for opening and closing. Very, very grungy Seattle sound, which I love. Um, also, not hockey related, but I'm trying to get this message out as much as possible. Anya and I watched the Beastie Boys story on Apple TV the other night. If you have not seen it, please watch it. That's all I'm going to say. It was incredible the way that them and Spike Jones worked together to tell their story. I've always loved Beastie Boys, but in those two hours, I learned a lot about them that I didn't ever realize. So um, that was a that was a fun little time. Yeah. So a lot of Beastie and Wu Tang in our house right now. <laughs> nice. So, what you watching? What you reading? As we close up here. Me. Yeah, you. Uh... Uh, I just, uh, I was going to say a little self, uh, plug for tomorrow. Um, or, uh, it might be, might be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, possibly if you go out to all beard, no tea through the volume two of the, uh, of the hockey by the book pandemic edition is coming out. Um, cover Sean Avery, love to hate him. <laughs> uh, he's, he's a polarizing character, but, uh, as much as I actually hate him, um, it's a hell of a read. Uh, there's going to be his uh, book, Ice Capades. Um, I review it out there. Let me know what you think. Um, okay. Aside from that, um, just uh, like I said, trying to squeeze in hockey where I can. Playing a lot of, of uh, NHL on the PS4. <laughs> there you go. Um, so I win some, I lose some. Mostly I just suck and... <laughs> and and cuss at the controller about what it's doing wrong despite the fact that I'm the, the input. Um, but yeah, just kind of trying, just finding happiness all over the place, whether it's with uh, my coworkers literally or my coworkers figuratively yeah. in my house, you know, just enjoying the chance to spend more time with the dogs and the family. Yeah. Quick question. Um, has your definition of alcoholic changed at all during quarantine? As a person who comes from a long line of alcoholics with varying degrees of uh, of alcoholism <laughs> and uh, tragedy that has been met with that, no, okay, it hasn't. it's uh, <laughs> hey, fair I, enough. <laughs> I, I manage. I man, I've always uh, I watched too much happen. Yeah, I've always managed my intake uh, really, um, really closely. But I got to say, you know, there are far more days like, uh, hey, we're having tacos tonight. Honey, want a beer? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. That, that comes out a lot, but uh, definitely not drinking, probably drinking a little bit more than I usually do. Sure. Um, but certainly people are. <laughs> There's, uh, huh. I, was read, I was reading an article like in March, 55%, uh, it was 55% more alcohol sales in the month of March. <laughs> oh, than, yeah. <laughs> In previous years, and a lot of it, a lot of it being delivered, when you can you know hit QFC or Fred Meyer, Heck yeah. Safeway, and say, hey, uh, now that you're selling the booze, and I don't have to go to a state-run liquor store, how about two bottles of rum, a bottle of wine, and a twelve-pack of beer? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I just want and, the whiskey. Know, yeah, just yeah. The, but you know, you you bring up a good point because we do talk. We have been talking a lot on all of our our creative outlets about more day drinking. I do have to say, we are responsible though. We're not going anywhere. We're not getting shit faced. I can't. I mean, I'm still you know. I've still got issues to deal with. So, oh yeah. But I will have to say, uh, having a drink at like 11 a.m. doesn't seem so odd anymore. So, no, not at all. Yeah, it doesn't for a lot of people. And you know, <laughs> I gotta say, if you need a social distancing measure to show people, you know, your ID if you're getting booze delivered, a hockey stick with a little tape on the end of it works <laughs> yeah, wonders. Love it. You, 
You can just whip it out there, say, hey, go ahead and set that down there. Skippy, here's my ID. Take a look at it. Thank you. Yep. And withdraw. It's I love about it. six feet long. I love it. I love it. All right, lady and gent, I think it's about time to wrap up episode 10. Yes. We will be back in a couple of weeks. We're working on some some new guests, uh, some people to talk hockey with. But um, don't forget, uh, check us out. Facebook group, Cascadia Hockey um, Club, I believe is how it's set up. I'm so bad. Cascadia Hockey Club. Just search it in the Facebook on search Facebook. feature. Buriedpuckthreads.com. We are a small business. Please support us. Um, I do have to say that I'm in talks right now to get another load of soul and ice stuff in um so yeah hopefully, hopefully that will happen since some dude in seattle bought our last soul and ice hoodie For so real um <laughs> <laughs> um, and also on that note, I wasn't, I forgot about this, but Kwame just uh, started the Soul on Ice podcast, which has had some really cool stories. He just had Jaden Lindo on this week, who was this, the, the kid he followed in the Soul on Ice movie. So, um, yeah, super cool. Yeah, for sure. For sure. He actually reached out to me after episode one and asked me what I thought. And I said, Hey, Love it, man. You're so full of energy. I said, but you got to find a way to make hockey players want to talk because most hockey players are all business. And he just laughed. He's like, they'll get there. I'm like, yeah, they will. They've got good stories to tell. Oh, so, yeah. Um, they're all they're all business and they're all about we and the team and stuff yep. like that. It's like, dude, have a personality. For real. For real. That's what people that's what people get on PK about is like. What are you getting on him about? He's got a personality. Yes, yep. he does. He is so fun. PK, Jeremy Roenick. I mean, people like that have always been kind of ostracized for their personality, but that's what the game needs. So, all right. Word. I think on that note, we're going to roll on out of here. We're going to get on with our evening, maybe a drink or two, dinner, whatever your Friday night brings you. Yes. Oh, it is Friday. Not Friday. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> for my lovely wife, Anya. Peace out, boys. Fry- Try Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> For my good friend Dan, thank you as always. Of course. Always good to chat with you guys. For sure. We love you, man. And on that note, I'll say peace out. Bye. Bye.